Hi everyone, it's Derek here from Adumed. Welcome to this video based on testicular pain and swelling. Now, if you only have 30 seconds to spend looking at this topic, then I suggest that you break your differentials down into two groups. So first, you can look at causes such as epididymitis and testicular torsion, put them all in one group. And then the second group will include differentials such as varicocele and hydrocele. And then the challenge from then is to look at the differentiating factors between the conditions within these two groups. Now, if you do have more than 30 seconds, I suggest you to keep on watching this video where I'm gonna go through in a little bit more detail the different causes of testicular pain and swelling. We'll look at the causes, management, and further investigation. So with that said, let's dive straight in. Earlier on, I mentioned putting our differentials into two different groups. This is because testicular torsion and epididymitis present in a similar way, and the same can be said for a varicocele and a hydrocele. So, let's start off by looking at testicular torsion and epididymitis. These two conditions present in a similar way with a unilateral severe testicular pain. We can differentiate between them by looking at two things. This is the prensine and the cremaster reflex. A positive prensine basically occurs if testicular pain is improved on lifting the testicle upwards. In testicular torsion, this is negative, meaning that lifting up the testicle doesn't get rid of the pain. In epididymitis, it is positive. The cremaster reflex occurs when the testicle moves upwards on stroking the inner thigh. If this occurs, it is a positive cremaster reflex. In testicular torsion, this reflex doesn't occur. In epididymitis, it does occur. Let's take a more detailed look into testicular torsion. This is a surgical emergency where the spermatic cord gets twisted. So patients here will most likely have a unilateral high ride in testicle. In addition to sudden onset testicular pain, patients may also have associated radiated abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. This is a condition that we should always consider in our younger patients who present with abdominal pain as the peak incidence occurs between the age of 13 to 16 and also during the neonatal period. If you suspect testicular torsion, these patients should be urgently referred or admitted due to complications such as ischemia and necrosis of the testicle. Now when we look at epididymitis, patients with this condition will present with infectious symptoms such as dysuria, urethral discharge, a fever and also increased urinary frequency. Between the ages of 14 and 35, the most common cause of this condition is our STIs. Now over the age of 35 or in those with a low risk of STIs, the most common causes include E. coli which is spread from the bladder. So, if you assess the patient and you feel that the epididymitis is less likely to be due to an STI, current guidance suggests sending off a urine for an MSU and then treating them empirically with either ofloxacin or levofloxacin. Now, these are both quinolone antibiotics, so it's important that each patient is counseled about potential side effects, particularly to the muscles, to the joints, and also the central nervous system. So let's take a look at our second grouping of testicular disorders, our varicoceles and hydrocells. These present similarly in that you have a painless enlarged testicle. The main differentiating factor here is if there's transillumination. Hydrocells will transilluminate, whereas in varicoceles there will be no transillumination. Varicoceles occur when there's dilation of the testicular veins within the pampiniform plexus. In this condition, you get the classic description here of something feeling like a bag of worms. The swelling tends to be worse on standing or straining and may disappear on lying down. Varicocils are usually managed conservatively unless there are concerns about fertility. 90% of varicocils occur on the left hand side. This is due to a difference in drainage between the left and right spermatic veins. Varicocils can also be a rare presenting feature of a renal cell carcinoma. Moving on to hydrocells, these occur where there's a collection of fluid within the tunica vaginalis. They can be classified as either communicating or non-communicating. Basically, a communicating hydrocell is caused by failed closure of the processus vaginalis. As a result of this, peritoneal fluid drains into the scrotum. Now, due to this, the valsalva maneuver will cause a communicating hydrocell to increase in size. Now, looking conversely at non-communicating hydrocells, these are caused by excess fluid production in the tunica vaginalis. There is no connection here to the peritoneal space, therefore the valsalva maneuver has no effect on the size. 
So let's wrap today's video up by looking at testicular cancer. Now this tends to present in relatively young males between the ages of 18 and 40. Now these patients mostly present with a painless testicular lump, but in a small subset, there may be a dragon sensation in the testicle. There may be also associated symptoms such as gynecomastia, a hydrocell, and also associated lymphadenopathy. Risk factors here include a family history, undescended testes, infertility and conditions such as Klinefelter's. If a tumour is suspected, these patients should be referred via the two equate pathway. Now management here involves orchidectomy, chemotherapy or radiotherapy. The prognosis is excellent. So that brings us to the end of today's video. If you found it helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I've also attached a link to our men's health and urology playlist in case you wanted to build up a bit more knowledge within this topic area. So till the next time, I'll see you soon.